Hello. So, um, I'm the one who uh, has been working on this whole dynamic gravity theory, trying to explain gravity and the universe the way we see it uh, better than general relativity has, because there's a lot of problems going on there. Um, before watching this video, I highly recommend you go back and watch my uh, other video I made uh, explaining the, the basic concept of dynamic gravity and how it works. Um, otherwise, this one's not going to make any real sense to you. It's just it's adding on to that. I'm going off explaining um, some more concepts better that I left kind of open, like uh, how exactly dynamic gravity is creating uh, dark matter and dark energy, um, exactly what's going on there and a few other things. So, uh, let's go and get started. Um, first of all, now, according to uh, general relativity, gravity is an infinite force. Um, this is saying that, you know, the furthest, furthest uh, galaxy that we can see, you know, with the Hubble telescope or whatever, um, you know, the planets inside that galaxy, uh, we are being affected by their gravity um, in extremely minute uh, amount that's non-existent, essentially, but it's there. Um, now, here's the problem um, with that. If that were the case, um, we know the universe is homogeneous as far as galaxies are concerned. We look out... And any direction we look, we see galaxies, they all look the same. Uh, there's no up or down or left or right in the universe that we can tell. It's just, it seems to be uh, pretty uniform in all places. But it's not the same, it's not identical. Um, the galaxies are larger, uh, some are larger than others, some are closer than others. Um, if gravity was infinite and we were affected by all gravity from all objects, it would be expected then that as the Earth orbits our Sun uh, and rotates and turns, um, we would be able to measure slight minute differences in uh, the gravity or the weight of things um, based purely off of uh, we're entering this realm around uh, the Sun, which has slightly more gravity in this half of the universe versus this half. Now, granted, that number would be really, really small difference, but according to the theory of general relativity, it would exist. It would be something that could be measurable. Um, maybe our, uh, our electronics right now aren't quite there yet, but I think uh, one day they will be, and uh, I don't think they're going to see that the uh, universe is different like that. I think what's more likely going to happen is that the uh, dynamic gravity version of uh, how gravity works is that gravity is not infinite. Um, now the electromagnetic force, which is essentially the uh, creative force of gravity, according to dynamic gravity, um, is uh, considered infinite, you know, with an R squared fall off ratio. <coughs> but that's not the actual case. Because what's going on is that uh, the, uh, the carrier particle for the electromagnetic force, uh, the virtual photons, actually interact with each other. Um, this is why we have a force being created from magnetic fields. You put two magnetic fields together, you know, uh, opposing forces, and it pushes the field uh, in a completely different direction. Um, if you have a strong enough magnet uh, that's of opposite polarity overpowering a small enough magnet, uh, you will not feel any magnetic pull uh, beyond the other side of that magnet. It's just not going to happen because the force is actually uh, the larger magnet. You know, it's opposing that is redirecting all the, uh, the the force, the carrier particles, back to the direction. Um, and this is uh, how dynamic gravity states gravity would operate too. Uh, theoretically, if you just had a single planet and a void, you know, with nothing else around it. <coughs> Yeah, I guess you could say that gravity could be an infinite force uh, on some way or another, but because there's other galaxies and other matter all throughout the entire universe, um, they're going to be interacting with all these other uh, gravitational fields. There's going to be too many barriers. Uh, odds are we're not going to see anything gravitational-wise outside of our own uh, Milky Way galaxy, if even that. Um, I think it'd be pretty slim for us to see anything more than maybe a uh, hundred light years out, I, I'd go as far to say, but once again, this is all just a guesstimation, because um, we don't have 
the exact numbers. I don't have any numbers right now for that, which is sad. So I just want to touch up on uh, that explanation a little bit. Um, and now I'm going to go off and explain uh, dark matter a little bit. Um, how dark matter is facilitated through dynamic gravity. <coughs> Currently, um, there's a few different theories as to what's creating dark matter. Um, nobody really knows. Um, that's why it's called dark, because we can't see it on any level. Um, but according to dynamic gravity, dark matter is an inevitable. Um, it's not an actual particle, um, per se, or a bit of matter that's creating this, uh, this force of gravity that's kind of skewing uh, the spin ratios in galaxies. But what's actually going on with dark matter and dynamic gravity <coughs> is okay. Let's say we have a, uh, a galaxy, right? It's, uh, you know, going to look something like this. You know, this is your core with your, you know, four black hole, you know, highly dense stars in here, uh, you know, more stars spiraling out as it goes away. <coughs> All right, so let's say this is spinning um, this direction, right? This is the direction that this galaxy is spinning around. Now, I'm trying to think of a way to explain this because it's kind of a difficult concept to convey properly. But the current theory of gravity states that gravitational fields, there's no uh, you know, anti-gravity, so to speak. There's no repulsive gravitational forces, so there's nothing pushing against each other. So when you pull uh, planets around, a star, so to speak, um, the planets are going to be pulling, trying to pull each other together a little bit, but not repelling it, and none of that going on in uh, general relativity. But in dynamic gravity, of course, as I hope you've watched the video by now, uh, there is a repelling force. And so this completely changes uh, how everything interacts um, when you're talking about galaxies spinning. Now, <coughs> let's say we have a couple of stars here, right? Uh, five to ten light years apart, as they tend to be, uh, as best we can tell, which is yet more evidence for dynamic gravity. There's something going on. It's not completely randomly spread apart. Um, now, these guys are going to have, uh, you know, different uh, repulsive levels of gravity going on with the positive force of dynamic gravity, um, and they're going to be pushing against each other at their happy little. Uh, medium where they come to be stable. Um, you know, if these two planets uh, get closer together, or get a force trying to push them closer together, they're going to repel. They're going to be pushing back uh, also equally as much as they're pushing towards each other. There's that force. So they're going to find stability there. Now, say you have the, the core of the, the galaxy, which is spinning in this direction. Now here's another also uh, interesting note to note of gra uh, dynamic gravity. Um, according to dynamic gravity, all the stars orbiting uh, the core of a galaxy are going to be going the same direction as the core of the galaxy itself is spinning. This is um, what you expect to see pretty much everywhere, unless there's something funny going on, like the uh, the object of the uh, of the uh, the galaxy is spinning, toppling itself upside down while it's going around and around. You might have something funny like that going on, but that we don't seem to be seeing any evidence of that um, right now in astronomy. So <laughs> pretty much it's a good rule of thumb that uh, that's what's going to happen. This also holds on a solar system level as well, where uh, as the solar system spins, uh, you have your star, you know, you have your little planets going out as they go out. Um, say they're going this way. Um, as they go out, they go slower and slower. And as they get closer, you know, they go faster and faster. And the star is going to be spinning, let's say, this way as well, as well. That way that the direction the star is spinning, all the planets are going to spin in the exact same way. And this seems to be the case everywhere we look um, that we can see anyways. <coughs> now, uh, because uh, what's causing this is, let's say, the field, uh, the gravity field of uh, the planet, um, it's shooting out. And as the planet is spinning, the field is kind of being dragged over, in a sense. Now, it's not a very good 
technical way to explain it because <laughs> the field itself is not actually persistent and just being carried over as the planet is spinning but it's more like the field is being constantly generated and as it's being generated and the star is spinning over and over um, the field is uh, turning and it's going to create a, a force that's going to pull um, the, the planets that are around there so that way you're not going to have planets just sitting still it's not going to happen while you have a spinning star now if you have a star that's not spinning for whatever reason that might be happening um, which again, we don't believe to be the case anywhere but if you have a star that's not spinning then you can make the argument yes it's very possible that there are planets that are not going to be orbiting it they're just going to be sitting stagnant and uh, in that case they might not even be in, a, in a, the plane the solar plane they might be all over the place because as they're spinning uh, the same direction um, that's what also kind of lowers them down to a nice little uh, solar plane uh, according to DG anyways, dynamic gravity <laughs> so <clears throat> let's go back to dark dark energy, or dark matter for a second uh, we're digressing, there's a lot of things I need to explain and throw out there um, by you so I hope you're not being overwhelmed, I hope you haven't given up on me yet um, but we're just getting started um, so these uh, stars and this galaxy are going to be pushing against each other. Well, as this galactic core is spinning uh, in this direction, right about this direction, and all these stars want to go this way, they're going to be uh, pushing against other stars that are nearby them, you know, on that 5 to 10 light year radius, depending on how large the near stars are. And um, it's going to create a pulse of force. It's going to, um, it's like a check and balance in the system where it's not going to, uh, all the force is not going to just carry over. A lot of it's going to get uh, jumbled up, and what's going to happen is it's going to take a lot longer for a galaxy to get uh, the motion spinning um, at all like it does compared to a solar system. The solar system, you don't know, have various uh, different planets right next to each other pushing on each other in the same orbit, you know? But this is very much the case in galaxies. So, <coughs> what we have as it spins. Uh, the galaxy is going to take a lot longer uh, time to get momentum spinning in the same direction. But once it does, what is going to happen is because all these stars here are going to be at their happy little distances as they're spinning over, they're all going to go at a much more consistent speed together. Um, it's not going to be the case like in a solar system where uh, the closest uh, planets are going to be orbiting faster around the star than the ones where the end. In a galaxy, what you're going to expect to see is it, it's going to be a much more uniform curve. Now, as it gets out towards the end, it's definitely going to fall off because uh, there's a lot less of this repulsive nature going on. And <coughs> it's not going to be 100% um, carry over. You know, as long as you have much stars, it's not like, well, they're all going to move together. They're going to be jumbled around, interacting dynamically with each other. So you're going to see that, you know, odds are that, that, that as you go towards the core of the galaxy, it's going to spin a little bit faster, but nothing like you see uh, can compare to a uh, solar system. And we know that this is going to be the case, where uh, galaxies are going to spin slightly faster than the core, otherwise we wouldn't have spiral galaxies. But it's definitely not going to be uh, the same, and essentially that is what is causing dark energy, is that repulsive nature of gravity and the stars pushing against each other as the, the core in the galaxy, the galactic core, is spinning, dragging all the objects that are in orbit around it uh, in the same direction, uniformly. So, <coughs> I hope that kind of explains a little bit of the uh, dark matter. Um, let's just a drag. Hold on one second, please. Alright, all I know is about that, technological difficulties, I haven't failed in these. Alright, so, <coughs> now let's go on to uh, explaining more dark energy. Um, dark energy is actually a lot simpler um, concept to understand in dynamic gravity and I guess uh, dark matter. Um, because dark matter, you got to kind of see how a lot of pieces fit together to get there. Dark energy, um, it's pretty much uh, essentially the, uh, the repulsive nature of gravity itself. 
Um, now we get this a little bit when we see like the, the, the sun as it's repulsing out the gravity, um, pushing away the larger planets into uh, further orbital distances away from the sun. Um, what's creating dark energy is that the same effect, but it's not from celestial objects. It's from something that I want to kind of coin a uh, super celestial. Um, what's a super celestial? Essentially a black hole, whether it be a galactic black hole or even a regular black hole. Um, now the force of dark energy itself is pretty much entirely true to galactic black holes, so let's just focus on that right now. So, you, uh, I hope you understand how black holes are created. You have uh, very large stars, and when they die, they explode and they implode, uh, pushing a bunch of that matter together, um, creating past this critical point. Uh, well, now you have this dark body, um, a very immense, intense gravitational pull. Um, now it's going to have a very uh, immense uh, negative gravity pull. It's also going to have an immense positive gravity pull, uh, according to dynamic gravity, because they're both the same. It's two sides of the same coin. So, you're going to have this immense uh, gravitational pull that's going to be pushing away also. Um, now, other galactic... Uh, whole galactic uh, core, uh, black holes, from nearby galaxies are going to be interacting with each other the exact same way that solar systems, um, the, the stars and solar systems are going to act. They're going to find a stable distance depending on how large they are, um, which could take a lot longer because you're talking about a lot more distance and a lot more mass going on there. Um, it's going to take much, much longer. So much, I wouldn't be concerned about the stable distance with uh, galaxies um, being together nearby. But they are going to <coughs> have these two galactic black holes, right? And what these two uh, galactic black holes are doing, they're getting bigger. Um, they didn't start off in the beginning time that size, and they've always been that size. No, they started off from a star, and they grew uh, into black holes, and they start consuming all nearby stars and other black holes that, you know, were a uh, doing the same thing nearby until eventually you have this massive black hole in the center of a galaxy and it's going to keep growing. It's not going to stop. It's going to keep consuming all the nearby planets and um, solar systems um, near it uh, as time goes on. So this black hole is going to get larger and it's going to have a more intense, immense gravitational field, both positive and negative. Um, and as the, uh, the, 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 the positive field gets larger, it's going to push out even harder on all the nearby galaxies as they're getting larger as well, those nearby galactic holes. And so what do you have? You have essentially a universe that has started <coughs> homogeneously all around you with um, galaxies scattered uh, here and there and there, which are all growing. Uh, their galactic black holes are growing larger and larger and pushing on each other more and more. What's going to happen? You're going to have this positive gravitational force which is going to be pushing the galaxies away from each other um, as much as it possibly can. There's no limits to that, but it's going to happen. This is what you'd expect to see is a expanding universe um, with dynamic gravity um, as the universe ages. Now, of course, one day it's going to happen where the uh, galaxies are going to consume all that they can consume and they're not going to grow any larger, and then uh, balance will kick in and then the universe will stop expanding unless more matter is being created, uh, which I really want to get into that right now. Um, that kind of goes more into my theory of uh, the Big Bang origin, um, or alternate theory, so to speak of that. Um, I'm not quite ready to talk about that yet, though, so uh, maybe someday soon we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. But basically what we need to know is that <coughs> dark energy is essentially the galactic black holes growing larger, and having a more positive um, uh, gravitational force be a journey with that. And so they're going to be pushing back on each other. The universe itself, as we can tell, is essentially growing larger and larger. This is uh, what dark energy is, and this is uh, exactly how dynamic gravity would expect it to look and how it explains it. Now, there is... <laughs> Funny thing with dynamic gravity, uh, everything is always, you know, two sides of the same coin, so it's always a little more complicated than at first you believe. Um, so you have these galaxies, the galactic hole growing larger. Um, 
you're going to have a positive gravitational field and a negative gravitational field of both growing larger, the pulling force and the repulsive force. Which one is going to win out overall? Um, the answer depends. Um, we know, obviously, as the black holes are growing larger, um, <laughs> the, the nearby celestial objects are going to lose out uh, to the pulling force of gravity. They're going to get sucked in because um, they don't have enough mass to repel against some kind of galactic black hole. Um, but yet, there is going to be that positive force pushing out all the celestial objects and the, uh, and the, the, the galaxy as well. Now, which one's going to win out? I think uh, I solidly would predict uh, that the, the negative pulling force of gravity uh, is going to win out, which means that as time goes on, you would expect uh, galaxies to shrink. The distance between galaxies will grow as galaxies will be spread out further apart from dark energy, but the galaxies themselves will actually shrink uh, time and time become more condensed and with larger black holes in the center consuming it. Um, this is also going to feed to the force of dark energy. Uh, dark energy, um, as the galaxy uh, shrinks, um, it's going to spin faster to the conservation of energy as it's already going in direction and everything's pushing against it uniformly. Uh, all the stars, as I showed you, are pushing apart uh, as the galaxy is spinning. So that's something that I would uh, predict is that galaxies would shrink over time and the uh, force contributed to dark energy would grow even faster than it would normally because of these uh, galactic black hole, uh, holes that are growing larger. Um, I think that's a pretty good job of uh, explaining uh, how dark energy and dark matter work. Um, it's a pretty basic concept once you think about what's actually going on, you understand the process of gravity. Um, it's a pretty easy prediction to make. And um, the evidence, as far as we can tell, is exactly along accordance with that. Um, now, i also like to explain uh, another concept of dynamic gravity, um, kind of related to general relativity a little bit. Um, general relativity, one of my scientific predictions, was that you know, no matter go faster than the speed of light, although he never said why. Um, now, according to uh, dynamic gravity, um, this is something that, you know, to my surprise, uh, popped up along with the formula that it kind of explains that. Um, you have uh, this gravitational field permeating all around you, and as any object of mass that's affected by this gravitational field is traveling through it, uh, the gravitational field is going to exert a force on it. The faster the object is going, uh, or the larger it is, the more force is going to be exerted on it. It's kind of like uh, the rain uh, paradox, or rain theory, where you know it's raining outside, and okay, the rain's coming down at a constant rate, and you're walking in the rain, and uh, you're calculating in your mind, okay, I'm getting so wet by the rain, I'm getting uh, this wet this quickly. Uh, my house is a block away. If I run and it'll take me, say, 20 seconds to get there, then 20 seconds times how, how much water is being poured on me um, is how what I should be. That's not what happens. Um, because you're running through the rain, you're actually running, cutting a path through all the rain that's falling down on top of you. So you get more rain. You get wet much faster. Um, and the faster you run in the rain, the more wet you get, even though you're in there at the same time, um, at the same time if you were standing still. So, now, essentially that's what's going on with dynamic gravity, explaining why things have trouble going faster than the speed of light. Because the particle that's facilitating gravity and dynamic gravity, which is the virtual photon, is traveling at the speed of light. Um, anything that goes up to that fast, uh, just exponentially, uh, requires uh, that much more energy to just get over that extra force of... Uh, of uh, you know, the, the virtual particles that are interacting with everything. And once you go beyond that uh, speed of gravity, well, then, you know, the amount of energy required is just astronomical. It's astronomical just approaching it. Um, but that's pretty much uh, why that is the case with dynamic gravity. Uh, one of the things that um, general relativity never 
explained. It was prediction Einstein made, and mathematically it was correct. Uh, we, you know, verified that a long time ago. But there was never any explanation as to why. It was just accepted, well, because Einstein said so. Um, and a lot of things Einstein said turned out to be right, uh, even though we don't know why. Um, but some of the things he said turned out to be wrong. He wasn't perfect by any means. So, let's move on to the um, next concept uh, I kind of want to explain. Um, <coughs> super celestials, talk a little bit about that, uh, black holes. Um, but let's talk about what a black hole really is. Um, Alright, so there's one thing that dynamic gravity predicts um, is not going to happen. The general relativity predicts is going to happen. Um, that we have done experiments that kind of say that that's the case. And that is the bending of light in, uh, around a gravitational field. Now, this is a really hot topic and a lot of people just take it at face value, but trust me, the evidence for bending of light is really not that strong um, because the only uh, experiments we can really do to see this are shooting laser beams through the uh, so close by the sun that's essentially being uh, refracted by the atmosphere and you have a, uh, a lens you know or a sphere acting like a lens from say a dense atmosphere and you're shooting light by it it's going to come in here <coughs> light comes in this direction and hits the, uh, the edge right here and gets to bend a little bit. Well, this is the exact same thing that they see going on with uh, general relativity's experimental data with uh, bending of light through uh, gravity. It's the exact same phenomenon, or not the same phenomenon, but it's the same end result. So, this is a huge flaw, or a huge uh, problem that dynamic gravity has to overcome because we have experiments where we shot laser beams by the sun and we see the light being bent and it goes pretty well according to Einstein's equations. The problem is we don't know how thick the atmosphere of the sun really is. We can't measure it. Uh, any craft we send up close enough to do that is going to vaporize, uh, atomize, burn up instantly. Um, we're pretty much just guessing uh, how thick the uh, atmosphere of the sun is and shooting uh, lasers and trying to compensate for the atmospheric uh, diffraction going on there. Um, <coughs> it's pretty weak uh, case, scientifically, to be honest with you. But, and here's a huge problem for uh, general relativity to want to talk about, is if uh, gravity truly bends light, why is it we are completely unable to detect any light being bent in the gravitational field of the Earth? We don't see this. Um, we have very precise instruments, uh, inframeters, whatnot. They can measure uh, very, very minute uh, forces upon them. And, um, you know, there's never been any uh, bending of light through gravitational means uh, in the Earth. That, you know, in a lab here on the Earth, we, can't, we cannot do it in the immense gravitational field of the Earth. We cannot detect it. We can only detect it shooting through the atmosphere of the Sun. That should be a red herring for most. Unfortunately, it's not. Um, so, why do I go off on this huge, uh, this huge rant about bending of light? Um, well, because it is a flaw in dynamic gravity, um, something that, you know, we're going to have to get to the bottom of to, to resolve. Or that, or accept that this is the one major thing that dynamic gravity predicts shouldn't happen that we're seeing. <laughs> but, <coughs> when it comes to black holes, we know that black holes exist. You know, we can, we have plenty of evidence for that. Um, and we know they're not emitting any real light spectrum that we can see. Uh, some of the gas and material around the black hole might be emitting x-rays um, from being heated so much, but the actual black hole itself is dark. Um, now, there's a couple things that could be going on here to explain this, uh, that dynamic gravity can explain in many ways that don't involve bending of light in a gravitational field. Sorry about that, my camera ran out of um, space. Um, so, talking about uh, the bending of light with, uh, with black holes and how dynamic gravity explains that, there's uh, two possible uh, theories I've been able to, to uh, come to grasp with that I think are plausible. Um, the first one, you know, uh, a gravitational field is extremely immense. Um, 
might be inhibiting the ability for uh, electrons uh, to decay to lower uh, energy orbital paths um, around the protons because this is exactly how light is created. Um, an electron will be orbiting a, uh, a uh, proton, a neutron, whatever the case may be, and as it absorbs other protons of energy, it will go to a higher state and then do that. And then over time, we don't really know why, but it will get bored of that, that higher energy state. It won't be there anymore and it will go down. And as it goes down, it will release a specific amount of uh, photonic energy. Um, so in a man's gravitational field, it might inhibit that process somewhere, but I think what's really going on, the, the, the real reason, uh, why I believe anyways, um, according to dynamic gravity, is going to be that uh, if you watch the first video, which I hope you have by now, then um, you'll know that uh, the gravitational source, like in dynamic gravity, is pulling on the electrons uh, and, um, and, and molecules and atoms. So if you have an immense enough uh, uh, gravitational field, such as uh, the coin term super celestial, where you know, that super word comes in and a lot of funny things are happening that you don't expect, um, it's going to be strong enough to rip away all of the electrons out of the, uh, the atoms and molecules. So what you're going to have is this kind of uh, soup of uh, you know, protons and neutrons and electrons in varying different layers, uh, depending on how the, you know, the black hole is structured, where there's no electrons orbiting protons. So you have no light being emitted. It doesn't exist. It's not being created. That's why it's black. It's not that the black hole is such an immense gravitational field that it's warping um, the uh, warping the light, you know, pulling it back in. It's just that no light's being emitted because there's no light chemistry that's allowed to go on there. Um, and then also uh, because um, neutrons are essentially protons and electrons, you could argue that it's probably mostly neutrons or something of the sort because uh, the gravitational field is so immense, it's probably going to smoosh all the electrons and protons together to create neutrons. So black holes might just be very, very large, dense um, balls of neutrons in space, just eating everything up is probably the case. Now, that's essentially um, what's going on, how black hole can easily be described without uh, general relativity being of light going on uh, to explain that phenomenon. Um, in fact, you'd kind of expect that because a larger black hole, you know, at some point in time is going to be strong enough to rip away the electrons out of the protons. And then um, you have no electron proton chemistry going on, like light, uh, electromagnetic radiation. So, um, I'd like to go off and talk for a minute about uh, possible things I've been working on to try and prove uh, dynamic gravity is real. Um, so, it's something I really would like to do in my lifetime if possible, but it's really hard. Um, one of the things I thought about, uh, obviously, is uh, observing the nature of a proton in a uh, gravitational field. Because according to dynamic gravity, protons are not going to fall in the gravitational field. And according to experimental data, it's kind of what we see. Um, we cannot measure the weight of a proton. We cannot do it. It's too unstable uh, is a key word that scientists use. Because um, it's extremely reactive. It's, you know, like a, almost like an acid particle will react with anything. But um, also, you just, you, it doesn't seem to fall in the gravitational field. It's, uh, it's bouncing around everywhere. This is kind of what we predict in uh, dynamic gravity. It's going to be very unstable. It's going to be uh, interacting, uh, trying to eventually make its way free of the Earth's gravitational field, being pushed out in space. Um, we'll probably get uh, absorbed up by, uh, I don't know, some that magnetic field of the Earth, like in the Van radiation belts or somewhere like that, uh, which is very proton um, rich up there, we know that. Um, so yeah, if we could, you know, in a laboratory actually just measure, you know, some good, uh, good science um, to, to observe the nature of a proton in a gravitational field in a vacuum, then yeah, that would be a really compelling evidence, either for or against dynamic gravity. So far, it seems like uh, that evidence is leaning towards dynamic gravity, though. I'm not against it, which is a good thing, I think. Um, there's also the uh, decay of radioactive isotopes. Um, according to uh, you know radio radioactive uh, you know theory, radiation theory, whatever. Um, 
isotopes decay at a specific uh, you know rate, as depending on the uh, the atom. They um, it's not influenced by heat or gravity or electromagnetic radiation or any other force that we know of. It just uh, an isotope is going to decay uh, at the rate that it's going to decay at. That we know we measure rate of decay. Um, now, according to general relativity, um, this is not necessarily the case because time and space are linked to general relativity. So, if you disrupt or warp one, you also inherently do the other one. So, according to general relativity, isotopes are going to decay slower in a gravitational field uh, because time is being warped itself. And, uh, or as you travel faster, um, and so I'm never really explaining why going faster uh, slows things down, but dynamic gravity does because you're traveling through a gravitational field, which um, means more gravity, more gravitational interactions. <coughs> but, <coughs> so, essentially an experiment could follow is you shoot off uh, some isotope like tritium, like a nine-year half-life or something, out in the space, and um, measure, uh, you know, have two isotopes identical, measure one on Earth after like, you know, nine years or something, and one in space. Um, and see if uh, there's any difference between the two. If, if they are different, then that um, would be evidence towards uh, general relativity, because general relativity says they would decay at different rates. Um, dynamic gravity does not believe in time dilation or time warping at all. There is no such thing as time travel, according to dynamic gravity. So, uh, they would be uh, the exact same uh, distance in their decay process uh, with dynamic gravity. Now, I don't know if this experiment's really viable. It's going to be very expensive, obviously, you know, launching uh, things, escaping gravitational fields, um, and then nine years, a decade later, you know, measuring them very accurately. Um, and the differences would not be very much. It would be, you know, probably along the orders of, like, I don't know, a tenth of a percent at best, if even that. Um, so, but it's an experiment. It's something that could be done. It's, uh, it's doable. Um, I definitely wouldn't be able to do it by myself, but it's one of the possible things. Um, I've also been toying around with the idea of uh, looking at the uh, molecular weights of uh, different um, atoms and isotopes. Um, but it's really hard because, you know, chemistry tends to average all the molecular weights together. So, um, yeah, there's there's different things I'm working on to try and um, give credibility to dynamic gravity, but, you know, I'm just one man and it's a huge theory. Um, and then also, there is um, the whole uh, thing of, excuse me, I'm kind of uh, space now right now, I've been talking for so long. <coughs> yeah, and then um, also there's the whole... Uh, Thing I'm trying to work out the, uh, the some better mathematics for dynamic gravity, but it's really hard. I mean, just the, the mathematics of general relativity. Uh, Einstein spent you know a long time, like you know, ten years on uh, working on that. He did it by himself. He had a lot of help, um, and it's some very advanced uh, mathematics going on there. And dynamic gravity is going to be even more advanced uh, because not only you have the repulsive. Uh, the, the attractive force gravity, you have the repulsive force, uh, and they're dynamically interacting with everything. You have the, the fields, uh, they're spinning, screening force that way. Um, there's a lot going on. It is um, mathematically, it would be probably almost double. Uh, yeah, as hard as uh, general relativity math, but most general relativity math uh, will carry over um, and hold true uh, to a certain degree dynamic gravity because. Einstein's theories, um, or his equation, not serious equation, uh, doesn't really work off the concept of space time. It works off the concept of um, energy uh, being stronger or uh, weaker as it goes out more from the source. That's the basis on his mathematics. Um, that's uh, essentially what he's uh, using to calculate um, how much gravity is going to be affected by something, by how fast it's going and whatnot. So, yeah, there's some, some things I'm working on. Um, ultimately, I just hope that uh, in our lifetime, we have the bottom of this whole gravity uh, mystery, because it's a mystery right now. Anybody that tells you that they know exactly what's going on gravity, um, just doesn't know. I mean, 
I have a full flesh out theory. I spent many years working out that explains gravity pretty well, um, you know, and, and all the things we observe. But even that, uh, there's so many huge uh, holes um, and things we just don't know about how uh, things work that there's a lot of room for error. And um, I just hope that we can get to the bottom of it in our lifetime. So thank you for watching. If you've watched this far, um, leave us some feedback. Let me think. Thank you.